Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Divit and in today's video, I'll be giving you a complete guide for how to get started with Google Analytics. We'll talk about how you can create an account, what properties are and data streams are. I'll cover all of the different reports such as for example, the acquisition reports, the engagement reports and how you can go ahead and view all kinds of different metrics. We'll go ahead and cover how you can set up your Google tag to your website so that both these platforms can talk to each other and everything else that you need to know when it comes to this platform and how to navigate it, I'll cover in this video. So if that interests you, then stick around, subscribe, and let's get into today's video. Now to get started, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create a Google Analytics 4 account. This is a very straightforward process. You just have to go to marketingplatform.google.com, which is this page right here. I have a link for this page in the description. If you click it, you can just go ahead and press the get started today option. And if you don't have a pre-existing Google Analytics 4 account, you should be directed to a page that looks like this. Those of you like myself who already have an account, you'll be directed to the Google Analytics dashboard, but I'll show you how you can create a new account by just going over here to admin, clicking this option, and then over here on the top left where it says create, just go ahead and press account. And this will take you to the same page for those of you that have no account, which is this page right here. So the first thing you need to do is give your account a name. So I'll just go ahead and call this Meta Media Demo. Make sure that the name corresponds to your particular company or whatever you're trying to track. And then over here, you can just go ahead and choose the account data sharing settings. I just keep it as is and then press the next option. Now, the next thing over here, once you've created an account is you have to create a property. So basically a property is you telling Google what you want to measure. Do you want to measure app data? Do you want to measure website data? Accordingly, you can go ahead and give your property name. All right. So in my case, I want to go ahead and measure my website's data. So I'll just go ahead and call it Meta Media Website. All right. So once we have a property name in place, go ahead and choose your time zone. Very straightforward. And then once you're happy with that, go ahead and choose your currency. And once you have these settings done, go ahead and press next. Now over here, they're asking you for some business details. You can go ahead and choose your industry categories. So in my case, I'll just go ahead and say computers and electronics and a small business size. Next over here, Google is just asking you for your business objectives. You can go ahead and select whatever makes sense. I'll just go ahead and choose them all. And once we have this set up, you can go ahead and press the create option. Then finally over here, just go ahead and accept to their terms and condition. And then now over here, we're going to go ahead and set up our data stream. So we have our account within our account, we have properties. So if we want to measure websites or apps, and then within those properties, we have data streams, which basically tells Google where to pull the data from. So in my case, it's a website. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose this as my platform. And here you can go ahead and put in your URL. So I'll just go ahead and say metamedia.io and then give my data stream a name. I'll just call this my personal website. So once you have all of this stuff set up over here, you have this thing called enhanced measurement. Just go ahead and keep that selected. And if you go ahead and select this gear icon, basically Google is telling you that by default, all of these different things will be tracked for you. If there's something in particular you don't want tracked, you can go ahead and actually deselect it. But I don't recommend that. I recommend just having everything selected so that you can get as much data as possible. So just keep this as is and press save and just make sure that your enhanced measurement over here is selected. So once you have your data stream also done, you can go ahead and press create and continue. And once you do that, you'll be directed over here, which is basically now Google telling us that we've set up our account. And now we just have to go ahead and set up our Google tag, as you can see over here. Now, basically what a Google tag is, it's a piece of code that allows Google Analytics to communicate with your website. So anytime somebody buys something on your website, it can be communicated through this tag with Google Analytics. I already have it installed right now, but I'll show you how to do it if you don't. So you can go ahead and choose this install manually option, which basically gives you this piece of code. And you need to go ahead and put this code immediately after the head tag in your website's code. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to do it this way, you can go ahead and press show more options. And the cool thing over here is that Google knows that a lot of people have their websites on WordPress. So it gives you options of how you can set it up with WordPress, or you can go ahead and use Google tag if that's more something you're comfortable with. For now, I'll just go ahead and show you how to do it manually. Even though my website is on WordPress, I think the manual option is the best way to go. 
So I can just go ahead and, you know, copy this right here. I can go into my WordPress dashboard, which is this dashboard right here. I can go ahead and choose a plugin I have called WP Code. So it's this plugin right here. And basically this plugin allows me to put any piece of code directly into my header, body, or footer section, wherever I want to put it. So I can just go over here and paste the code in and press save changes. All right, so it's really that simple how you can do this. And then you can go back to the analytics option and just go ahead and press test installation. So we can see right here, Google is telling me that the tag was correctly detected on my website. And that's how you can do it for your own particular site too. Now, once we have that set up, Google basically over here is telling me that data collection isn't active for your website. If you install tags more than 48 hours ago, make sure that they're set up correctly. So sometimes depending on how you install your tag, it takes about an hour to maybe a day for Google to actually read and be able to properly see the tag. So don't be too concerned if you don't see data right away. It should come eventually. Now over here, this is just basic information that you've set up. So this is my personal website. This is my particular URL. And this is the measurement ID. This is basically a unique ID for this particular data stream, which I can go ahead and plug into different platforms to connect it to Google Analytics. So now I'm happy with everything over here. I don't really need to do anything. I can go ahead and press X. And now we can go ahead and press this next option over here and just press continue to home. So once we have that completed, we'll be directed to this page, which is our main dashboard for Google Analytics. Now, once again, my dashboard right now is empty because there's no data. And like I said, again, don't be too concerned about this. Sometimes it takes a few hours to update. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually show you the Google Analytics demo account. So it's a demo account that's available to the public created by Google that allows people to mess around with Google Analytics to get their feet wet. So I'll have a link for this in the description if you want to go ahead and play around with it, but it gives us more data to actually visualize and properly see how the reports work. So the first thing I want to talk about over here is your home tab. And on this tab, basically you have a summary of everything that's happening on your website. So for example, your active users, the sessions, the event counts, these are basically all of the data that Google is tracking in terms of page views, button clicks, things like that. Key events are like conversions. You can go ahead and change it. Let's say, for example, if you don't want to see sessions, you want to see something like checkout, you can go ahead and set that up over here and the metric changes. If I scroll down over here, you have all of the different countries from where your traffic is coming from and the different mediums, like for example, organic search, paid search and the different ways or channels rather that they're coming through. So over here, we see this dotted line and this dotted line basically is a comparison for the previous time frame, So you can easily very quickly look at this week versus last week. There's a 17% drop in traffic. Over here, there's an increase in traffic. So it gives you a very visual representation. So once you have this understanding, the next thing I want to talk about over here is this report section. This is where most of your time is going to be spent on Google Analytics. And there's tons of different reports here. They have like 20 to 30 different reports. Some of them are pretty useless, but there are some that are important, which I'll cover in this video. Now, before we go ahead and actually talk about the reports over here on the top right, we have this option which allows us to choose the time frame we want the reporting on. So let's say we want it for the past seven days, we can choose that. If you want it for the entire year, all of these different metrics, you can go ahead and change. All right, so I'll just keep it at last 28 days for now. So once you have that selected, the first report I want to talk about very quickly is this real time report. So basically over here, this gives you a real time number in terms of how your website is doing. So right now or in the last 30 minutes, if there's somebody visiting your website, you can have a very good idea of it right here. And it shows you, for example, the active users in the last five minutes, active users in the last 30 minutes, and it shows you from what different geographies people are coming from. Okay, so it's a really cool way to measure data in real time. Similarly here, you have your real time pages. So again, this is basically showing you what pages in real time in the last 30 minutes or so people are clicking on. And all of that information is available to you over here. And you can go ahead and actually click this option to see more data for the different pages. All right. So that's how you can go ahead and set that up. Over here, the next thing I want to talk about is the acquisition reports. Now, these are very important reports because this basically tells you how your traffic is being acquired. So if I press the overview option here, we can see that right now it's telling me I have 49K active users. And if I scroll down over here, it tells me that a lot of these users are coming from direct. So basically they probably know about my website and they're just typing it directly into search. Organic searches, they're typing it into Google, paid searches, any paid advertisements. 
referrals are from other websites and things like that. Okay, so you have all of these different ways very quickly to get an overview of how traffic is coming to your website. If you go ahead and press user acquisition, this is another important report. It basically tells you, again, by the different channel groups where the users are coming from. All right, so you have all of these different metrics available to you. You have your average engagement time, and these right here are your top five user acquisition channels. All right, so that's how you can go ahead and play around with this. And if you go ahead and click this option over here, you, you can go ahead and choose exactly what data you want to see. So let's say, for example, you want to go ahead and see first user campaign. You can select that over here. And once this loads up, you can see right here, it's giving me certain campaigns that maybe I'm running on Google ads that are driving traffic to my website. I can see all of that information here. All right, so that's another cool way. Traffic acquisition is again, very similar to user acquisition. It just tells you basically how people are getting onto your website and a lot of the same metrics are available to you here. The next thing over here is your engagement. Now there's a bunch of different reports over here, but the most important one in my opinion is pages and screens. And on this report, you can see exactly which page on your website is bringing in the traffic and what people are clicking on. So we can see our checkout page. This slash basically means home page. So this is home page, our checkout page, our shop new page is what's really getting a lot of traffic for us for this demo store. All right. So that's basically all of this information. That's probably the most important one. The next important one over here is landing page. So land, landing page reports show you exactly what page people are landing on from the different channels. So these are some of our most popular landing pages. So you can get a very good idea of how your website is showing up to different people. Finally, over here, you have monetization. This is more for the e-commerce side of things. So if you have an e-commerce store under e-commerce purchases, you can exactly figure out which products are being viewed the most, being added to the cart, being purchased. So it's a very helpful view. We exactly know, okay, these products I should scale. These products are not doing very well. Your purchase journey in monetization basically allows you to see exactly what flow people have come into when they're going to your website to actually purchase a particular product, right? So you can see all of these different things like your abandonment rate. And over here, you can go ahead and see from step one to what the actual step five conversion is. So that's basically the different devices from which people are, you know, going through your entire journey. And you can get a very good idea of if your mobile site is doing better or your desktop is attributing for more purchases. Then finally, over here, you have your user attribute reports. Here, if you go ahead and press the overview option, it basically shows you exactly, for example, what the demographic in terms of your gender, of people that are coming onto your website, the age, all of these different things are available to you in terms of language also. So you can get a very good idea of what your user profile is currently for your website. Finally, the next thing I want to talk about over here is this Explore tab. So under this Explore tab, you can go ahead and actually create custom reports based on your particular need. So there are some templates available that Google has already provided you. You can go ahead and choose by clicking the template gallery and see any of these existing templates and create reports accordingly. Or you can just go ahead and choose a report yourself and then build it based on whatever metrics you want to see. They'll all appear over here. And then right here, you can go ahead and choose exactly which segments and dimensions you want to go ahead and show in these different rows and columns. All right. So that's a way to really create customized reporting. Finally, you have your advertising tab over here. This is basically if you have your Google ads account connected to your Google analytics account, you can go ahead and view the conversion models and how people are actually converting on an ads basis with your website. All right. So that's how you can go ahead and set that up right here. So with that said, everybody, that's pretty much it. That's an overview of Google Analytics. That's how you can go ahead and use this platform to capture as much information as you can for your traffic and your website. Now, if you found this video educational, then go ahead and press the like button and share it with your friends. And as always, if you're interested in more content like this, then check out my channel. I make all kinds of videos on Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and things like Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. That being said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.